this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, please. Let's none none okay. of this, please. Sit down. So this prayer is very significant for us to understand how we should approach the Lord Nusringa Day. Prabhat Maharaj and the residents of Hari Mamsa they're praying <coughs> to Lord Nusringa Day. You possess nails and teeth like thunderbolts. Lord Nusringa Dev used his nails, of course, to rip Haranya Kashipu. And when he ripped apart Haranya Kashipu, he took out his intestines and put them around his neck for a flower, just like a flower cup, a garland of intestines. So in this way, Lord Nusringa Dev was very fearful to those who are not devotees. Lions are fearful, but for the cubs, the cubs, they're not afraid of the lion. They've taken shelter of the lion. And similarly, Prahlad Maharaj and the devotees of Lord Nusringa Dev, they do not fear Lord Nusringa Dev because they have taken shelter of him. But to those who are not devotees, then Lord Nusringadev is very fearsome. So Lord Nusringadev appears in this world, just like Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, why he comes in this world. Yadari Dari Dharmasya Brahmi Bhavati Bharata Adhutanam Adharmasyam Sajam. Good, yes. Right, he comes to give pleasure to his devotees, like Prahlad Maharaj. And at the same time, he comes to annihilate the miscreants, the demons, like uh, the father of Prahlad Maharaj, Arangi Kashipu. So Lord Nusringadev is very fearsome to those who are not surrendered to him. But for those who have taken shelter of him, then he is the source of great pleasure. Prahlad Maharaj and the residents of Hari Mamsa all worship Lord Nusringa Dev and they pray to him, kindly vanquish our demonic-like desires for fruitive activities. Usually, you know, when people go to temple or go to mosque or church, whatever, they pray to God, they have some material desires. They go to God to ask for something. You know, we want money, we want position, we want success, we want the, all the opulence of the material world. And we may go to God and pray to Him for these things. So the Lord hears these prayers, but they're not very pleasing to Him. You know, just like yourself, as parents, if you have children, your child, if they always come to you, Mommy, can you get me a new, new iPhone? Please give me that and that. And so we go, to, we go to the Lord and we pray to Him for these things. So that is not the mood of pure devotion. And that is not very pleasing to the Lord also. Because the Lord is a devotee. Actually, Prahlad comes from the spiritual world. He's a resident of Vaikuntha, but he comes to this world to take part in the pastimes of the Lord. So, Prahlad Maharaj shows us how we have to pray to Lord Nusringa Dev. That we, we pray to him, please take away our desires for fruitive activities. We want to come to the level of pure devotion, not mixed devotion, but pure devotion. Mixed devotion means we have some devotion, we have some feeling, some love for the Lord, but we have a lot of other desires also. And so we're asking the Lord to help us, to give us 
So that is not the mood of real devotion. We want to cultivate the mood of pure devotion, right? Rupa Goswami describes pure devotion. Anya We also don't want philosophical speculation, which may lead to jnan, which may lead to impersonal liberation, entering into the Brahma Jyoti and becoming one with the Supreme. So those two things are rejected by the pure devotee. Rupa Goswami also describes pure devotional service. He said, Sarv upadi vinir moktam, tad paradvena nirmalam, rishikesha rishikena sevanam, bhaktiya kuchate. And he's saying, give up all designations, upadis, upadis in the material world. Somebody, you know, the Ishwara, we, we, we want to be, we want, we like these designations. If you can become the, get the, the position, then that is, gives some pleasure to people. I'm part in the service of Rishikesh. Rishikesh meaning Lord Sex Krishna, the Supreme Lord. Hmm? So, we have senses, he's given us the senses. They're meant to be used for his service. So Prahlad Maharaj, as a devotee of the Lord, he understands all of these things. Therefore, he prays to Lord Nishrimide, kindly vanquish our demonic-like desires for fruitive activity. Now you have to understand, we cannot stop desire but we can purify desire. We can have a higher level of desire. Instead of just desiring for the body, we want to desire for the soul. Come to the spiritual platform. And know what we should desire for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. How to please Him. Lord Krishna is pleased by devotion. Prahlad Maharaj has devotion, and that is what pleases Lord Nishringadev. After Lord Nishringadev had killed Haranyakashipu, Prahlad Maharaj came before Lord Nishringadev. Now, Prahlad was the son of the demon who Lord Nishringadev had just killed. But that person who Lord Nishringadev killed was going to kill Prahlad. He was going to kill his own son. Sometimes fathers get angry at the son, right? <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> so Harangi Kashipu was in that mood, you know, he was waving his sword and he said, I'll cut your head off. Because Prahlad was speaking to his father about worshipping Vishnu. And that made him very angry made his father very angry because his father considered Vishnu to be the enemy. Now Prahlad had always been telling his father that he shouldn't be making these distinctions. Like we were saying, Upadis, designation. We make distinction, friend, enemy. This is my friend, he's my enemy. This is not the good consciousness. Yeah, Prahlad was telling his father like that, the, the guru, he, because his father had put him in the Guru Kula. He sent him to the school for the training of the demons, to make you a good demon, to grow up to be a good materialist. Right? And part of the training was how to deal with your enemies. And how, how do you deal with, how do people deal with their enemies? We see it in the, in the world today. Somebody is a politician. So if, if the other person is the enemy, they'll have him, they'll try to put bad name on him, they'll say bad things about him, and they'll criticize him. They may even put him in jail. 
And sometimes they do that, right? The opposition leaders are arrested and put into prison. And sometimes they may even be killed if, they're, if, the, if the person who is ruling gets his way. You want to kill his enemies. This is described by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita when he describes the divine nature and the demoniac nature. Those who are asuras, they're thinking like that. They're thinking, Ishwaraham, that I am the controller. They want to be the controller. They think they are the controller. And Ahambogi, I am the enjoyer. We all want to enjoy. Everyone's trying to enjoy. We're all trying to control. We have that mood in the material world. And that is the demoniac nature. We want to overcome that. But those who are materialistic, they live for that. That is their goal, to be the controller, to be the enjoyer. Ishwaraham, ahambhogi, siddoham, balagam sukhi. Siddho, I am, I have powers, I am very powerful, I have cities, right? The people are thinking like that. Harani Kashipu, the father of Prahlad, was like that. And he did have cities, he was very powerful. He conquered heaven. So Siddhoham, Bala Bam Sukhi. Bala, he's very strong. And Sukhi, he's happy, he's thinking, yes. I am the controller, I am the... So he's happy thinking like that. This is the foolishness of the materialists. Although they're suffering so much, they're always thinking, well, oh, I'm happy, I'm enjoying. Uh, one devotee, he brought his mother to meet Prabhupada. And the lady came in here. She was a middle-aged lady, you know, and she came to meet Prabhupada and it was New York and it was summertime. And she came in and she said, oh, Swamiji, it's so hot out there today. You know, today we also saw it's so hot, you know, so hot just now. Coming to the summer, getting hotter, right? So very hot. And so she was saying like that. So Prabhupada began to speak to her about how there's so much suffering in the world. That yes, it's so much suffering. We're suffering so much. We suffer the heat, we suffer the cold, right? Maybe you know that song we sing, Baja Hari Mana, right? Sita Atapa Baja Bareshana Edina Jamini Jagere. Chapala Sukalaba Etan Sita Apata. Vata Varesana Edina Jamini Chagiri. Bipali Sevinu Kripana Durajana Chapala Sukalaba We tolerate so many difficulties. The heat, the cold, the rain. Right? Did you get rain like Dubai? Too much rain. Too much rain here. More than you get in. And one, in one day you got what you get in two years. <laughs> so that is, you see, suffering. We're suffering so much. It's some, so hot, so much rain. And still, we've got to work. You know, but where are you? Why are you not at work? You know, <laughs> like that. And so we have to work for all of these usually wicked, miserly people. <coughs> and why we're working? For Chapala Sukha flickering happiness. So Prabhupada was telling the devotee's mother, we're suffering so much. And so, because she was talking, it's so hard, and oh, it's so hard. And so Prabhupada said, yeah, you're suffering so much. And I said, no, no, we're not suffering. We're not suffering. I'm happy. <laughs> Prabhupada, just a minute ago, you were saying how you're suffering. Now you're saying you're happy. <laughs> This is, this is the material world, people. We're thinking we're happy, even we're in the most miserable condition. It, it, it's told that Indra, the king of heaven, he made a great offense against Brihaspati. So Brihaspati was very angry with him. 
He cursed him to become a pig. And he had to enter into a pig's body. And he was living in the pig's sty with all the pigs. So Brihaspati left him there in the pig sty for some time. And then he came back and said, all right, Indra, now you come back. Now you've been here long enough. But Indra said, no, I'm happy here. <laughs> I like it here. Every day the farmer brings big buckets of pig, pig food. And I'm happy. I have my family here. All my pigs are here. He's, he's thinking, I don't want to go. Even we're in the most horrible situation. We get so, we're thinking it's okay. And so then Brihaspati said, oh, you want to stay, is it? <laughs> so he went and brought the butcher with a big knife. And the butcher said, oh, where's that big fat pig? That was Indra. Indra said, oh, you know. He came running, save me, don't, don't chop me up. So he went back. Said, but this is material life, like that. We don't realize how much we're suffering constantly. So, but still we're thinking, Oh, life is not so bad. Mm -hmm. So Prahlad Maharaj, he prays to Lord Nishringadev uh, that we're in this material world, we're, we're suffering because of ignorance. So it's a kindly vanquish our demonic-like desires for fruitive activity. Please appear in our heart and drive away our ignorance so that we might become fearless in our struggle for existence in the material world. Fearing is something which we often have, we're often afraid, you know. We, we live in constant fear. Of course, when there was COVID, we were all fearful, oh, I'll get COVID, and of course, many of us did get COVID, and, you know. It's, it's a fearful situation when there's a pandemic or when there's an earthquake or there's a typhoon, maybe terrible heat wave. I was just in Thailand, we had a heat wave. No rain for months and months. It was so hot and dry. So we live in fear of all of this material existence. We're in fear of disease, we're in fear of old age, and we're in fear of death. So that is the nature of the material world. How do we overcome that fear? We have to become Krishna conscious. We have to take shelter. Just like Prahlad, he takes shelter of the Lord. He's a devotee. And Lord Nishringadev comes to protect him. So in the same way, if we also take shelter of the Lord, then no fear can disturb us. A devotee of the Lord surrenders to the Lord. He's not afraid of the material existence because he knows he's in the hands of Krishna. We live by the grace of Krishna, and when Krishna wants us to go, we will leave the world. We, we say, Mare Krishna Rake Ke. Mare Krishna Mare Ke. Right. If we want to live, if Krishna wants us to live, nobody can kill. And if Krishna wants us to die, nobody can save us. So a devotee surrenders to Krishna. It just depends on Krishna. How do we surrender to Krishna? We have to take the shelter of Krishna's devotees. Dandara Charana Seva, Bhakta Sanivas, Janami Janami Hoi, Yes, right. May I always have the association of the devotees, birth after birth. So that's important for us. And Prahlad Maharaj teaches us like that that we should take the shelter of the association of the devotees. Because in the association of devotees, there will be discussion of the Lord and his wonderful pastimes. Prahlad Maharaj was always telling his friends in the Guru Kula that why waste so much time 
playing game, football, this game, that game. Now, you know, people play the game, mobile phone, the whole day games, you know, it becomes a big problem. In, in China, they have banned the mobile phone for children under a certain age, and they are only allowed one or two hours in a week to, play, to use it. So they, they, they're so worried about the effect it's having on them. So Prahlad Maharaj was telling his friends also, not, they weren't really his friends, but they were in the same Gurukula, and they were from demoniac families like Prahlad. And Prahlad tells them that we waste this valuable human life. We spend so many hours sleeping every night, right? If you sleep half the day, then if you live to be a hundred, you've slept fifty years. Lord Chaitanya went to Gaya and got initiated by who was the guru? Ishwarapuri. Ishwarapuri came back from Gaya, and he went to uh, Kanaina Sala. And in Kanaina Sala, he had wonderful experience. Krishna had appeared, and he had this experience with Krishna. Then he came back to Mayapur, and he called all the devotees, and he said, we, we have to have kirtan. And he said, let us not sleep at night anymore. Let us just have kirtan all night. And they would go to Srivas Pandit's home, and every night they would have kirtan in his home. They wouldn't sleep anymore. Sometimes we do like that. When Prabhupada was very sick, we would also do uh, Kanda Kirtan, 24 hour non stop Kirtan. Just like they're doing in Krishna Balaram Mandir and in Mayapur, they're doing non stop Kirtan, a Kanda Kirtan. So, Nowadays, Srila Jai Swami Maharaj's health is not very good, very not good condition. He wants us to pray for him. He wants us to do more kirtan, more chanting, more hearing, more kata. He said that will help him to keep living more in this world, to stay with us. So we can have that good, to do more kirtan, and certainly tomorrow, being an auspicious day, we want to spend time there to chant the names of the Lord, to chant more rounds, and to try to hear the Qur'an. So are you having a big program here tomorrow night? Yeah, hostel. Uh -huh. And there will be a big program we're having in Dubai at the Cindy Hall. We'll have a program there. We'll do Abhishek, a lot of Qur'an, a lot of Qur'an. This is how we celebrate the appearance of the Lord. Janmashtami, Gorpurnima, Ramnomi, these are all auspicious days. And so similarly, Nashringa Chaturdesi is a very important day for the devotees. The day in which Lord Nashringa Deva appears to bless his devotee. Prahlad Maharaj, as a young boy, he came before Lord Nishringadev. Everyone else was afraid. Even Lakshmi, his consort, she said, I've never seen him like this. He was so angry. You know, sometimes you may say like that about your husband. I never saw him so angry. <laughs> you become afraid. So Lakshmi was afraid to go near Lord Nishringadev. So Lord Brahma said to Prahlad, you try. You see if you can calm him down, Prahlad. And Prahlad came forward and offered the obeisances. And then when he stood up, Lord Nishringadev put his lotus hand on his head and filled him with divya gyan, spiritual knowledge. And so in this way, Prahlad Maharaj was able to offer nice prayers to Lord Nishringadev. And Prahlad Maharaj begins in a very humble way when he prayed to Lord Nishringadev. Qualification of a devotee is to be humble. Just like in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj is writing. And he says, 
जगाई मजाई है ते मनीषे पतिस्ता पुरुष शेरा की ता है ते मनीषे लगिस्ता ही से I am more sinful than Jagai and Mankai. Anyone who utters my name, they will become sinful. And anyone who hears about me, they'll lose their pious activities. He said, I'm so fallen. Only Lord Nityananda's mercy could deliver such a fallen soul. So in this way, Krishna does Kaviraj praise. And this evening also I began, I was singing Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Naratam Das Thakur. He also prays in a similar way. He said, Patita Pavana Hitu Tava Avatara Mosamo Patita Prabhu Nahayana. That you are Patita Pavan, Lord Goranga is Patita Pavan. He has come to save the fallen souls. Naratam says, I am very fallen. Please save me, because I am very fond so. Narantam is a great devotee, but he's so humble. See, the more one is devotee, the more one thinks I'm not a devotee. I have no devotion. So humility is a very important quality of devotees. And we are also encouraged to be humble. The Lord Chaitanya spoke, Shikshastikam. How humble we should be, we should think of ourselves lower than a, a straw in the street. Because the spirit soul is very small. What's the size of the soul? One ten thousand of the tip of the hair. So our ego should be in proportion to our spiritual dimension, right? But we are thinking I'm five foot eight, five foot five, and we identify with the body. So that is a hunkar, that is false ego. But true ego is to think I am a very tiny spirit soul, part and part very small, insignificant. And in this way, we should offer all respects to others. Amanena manadena, offering respects to others and not being anxious to get any respect for ourselves. Similarly, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is speaking about the qualities of one who is in knowledge. And he points, what are the very first things he mentions, the first qualities of one in knowledge? He says, pridelessness. Pridelessness and humility. These are the first two things he mentions. For one in knowledge. We're thinking knowledge you get in the college go to university, get a degree, oh, I have so much knowledge, I am BSc, PhD, whatever. Now everyone goes to study, we're thinking that's not. But the real knowledge is to understand that I'm a very low person, I'm a soul, I'm not the body. That is the real education. And Prahlad Maharaj, He's explaining these things to the other boys who are his classmates there in that Guru Kula for the demons, training them to become good rulers and controllers. But Prahlad is telling them, we should understand our real identity as spiritual beings, not as the body. That is the ignorance to think, I am the body. So Prahlad Maharaj, he understood his spiritual identity and he prays to Lord Nishringadev that, uh, that he can always take the shelter of the association of devotees. And especially he said, I never want to give up my spiritual teacher. Prahlad said, I was 
falling into a dark well, but my spiritual teacher came and he gave me instructions and saved me from that condition. He said, how could I ever give up my connection with that person? So Prahlad Maharaj was appreciating how he got mercy. He got mercy from Narada Muni. Narada Muni had instructed his mother, but Prahlad, because he was in the womb of the mother, he was also hearing. And he took advantage of that knowledge. And he vowed, I will, I can never give up. How I could ever give up such association. Just like Srila Prabhupada also said about his own spiritual teacher, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he said, he saved me. He said like that Prabhupada said about his guru, that he saved me. So Prahlad Maharaj is saying the same thing, that I was falling into a well because of all my material desires. Material life is like that. It's like falling into a well. It's very difficult to get out when you go in the well. If you fall in the well, it's not easy to get out, is it? In the, in, when we do Parikrama, Braja Mandal Parikrama, if you go to Braja and Parikrama there, and you go in the fields there, and then one time one devotee fell in the well, he actually fell in the well. And he was a big, a big devotee, you know, he was quite a big size. So it was really difficult to get him out of the well. And bones were broken and fractures and all oh, that goodness. It took the whole day, practically, to get him out of the well. So, material life is some things like that, like falling into a well. How do you get out the well? Well, you throw the rope, right? Pass, give the rope down, and then you have to hold the rope. You want to get them out. The person in the bottom of the well is saying, get me out, get me out. Hold the rope. Just, just get me out. Hold the rope. Oh, get me. Hold the rope. Just get me out. I don't want to hold the rope. How we can get? How we can get? We must hold the rope. The same way. What is the rope to get out of this material life? To get out of this well of attachment? The rope is the instructions of the spiritual teacher. The spiritual teachers tell us how we can get out of this well of attachment. We have to follow these instructions. This is sadhana bhakti, right? We do sadhana practice. We chant the holy name. We worship Krishna. And we read the books about Krishna. This is, in this way, we can become Krishna conscious. And we can get out of that well of material existence. So Prahlad Maharaj says to Lord Nusringadev, he said, I am not afraid of the material world. He said, I can go any I can go anywhere. For a devotee who's taken shelter of the Lord, heaven and hell and liberation are all the same. Because wherever the devotee goes, he will chant the holy name and he will worship Krishna and read the book about Krishna. There's no difference, you know, where you go. It's what you do which is important when you go there. So, Shastra says, Narayana parasarve narkutas chinyavivyate swarga apavarga narakesh vapitu yatata. If you have taken shelter of Lord Narayan, there's no difference between heaven and hell. So Prahlad said, I'm not afraid of these places. Prahlad is coming from the hellish planets. He's living in the lower region of the universe with the demons. That's where they live. But Prahlad said, wherever I go, I can remember the Lord. I can chant his glories. So it doesn't worry me. It's not a problem. 
But he said, I am concerned for those people who don't know anything about the Lord, who are making plans to be comfortable here in this material world. He said, I'm concerned with love for them. Because he knows they'll never be successful. We make plans trying to be comfortable, to make a nice situation here in this world, and suddenly it's all taken away from us. Prahlad Maharaj said, I don't want anything from Lord Nishrini Day. I don't, I'm not asking for anything. Because he said, I've seen my own father. His own father was the king of heaven. He conquered Indra, he conquered the heavenly planets. He was ruling everywhere. And just the movements of his eyebrows would terrorize the demigods. They'd all be afraid of him. But he said, I have seen that my father, while he had so much power, he lost everything in a moment. All gone, all finished. That is material life. When I became a devotee in England in 1971, it was, I remember what happened. There was one country in Africa, Uganda. And there were people living there in Uganda. Many Gujarat. Gujarat. And what happened was this one man, Hidi or something. Yeah, he came, he came in power and he told every, all the Indian people, get out, get out, and leave everything behind. Don't take anything with And they all had to come. They, they were, of course, Uganda was a British colony, so they had British passports, so they came to London. And I was in London at the time with the, with the Hare Krishna movement. I remember they all came from Uganda. They came there to London with nothing. They had to leave everything. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. Yeah. And sometimes you don't know when we're going to have to leave this world. At any moment, it can all be taken. Just like Prahlad's father. Prahlad saw his father was so powerful, but next minute he was dead. So Prahlad said, why should I endeavor for something in this material world? It's temporary. It's going to be finished with the body. So many big men had big empires. Hitler was conquering Europe. And Napoleon, he also tried to conquer Europe before Hitler. There were so many great men. There was, there was also uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. He was also in the Indian Independence Army. Where are they all now? With the course of time, we're all removed, right? So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, time I am, destroyer of the world, and I come to claim all men. And Lord Krishna, of course, tells Arjun, except for you Pandavas, everyone's going to be removed from the world. Bhishma, Drona, Karna, everyone finished. Krishna was showing Kala Rup, his form of time, to Arjuna. So Arjuna, uh, rather Prahlad, he, he understood these things and he was not in any illusion about the material world. And so he, 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 would, he just simply asked Lord Nishringadev, he said, if you want to bless me, then kindly bless me that in my heart there will be no material desires, no desires for enjoying this world. Just bless me that I can always have the shelter of your lotus feet and be engaged in your service. That is the real goal of my life. So Lord Nishringa did, of course, was very happy with Prahlad. And Prahlad was worried about his father. Maybe, boom, he said, I, I, I'm just worried about my father because he's such a demon. And maybe he's gone to hell. But Lord Nishringa did said, no, 
He said, because you're a devotee, so everyone in your family, all your forefathers, all the and all your descendants, they will all be liberated from the material world. Because you're a pure devotee. So you also must become pure devotees, and in this way you can also deliver your practice. <laughs> Any questions? How are we doing on time? No, it's eight forty. So Krishna consciousness is very natural. It's a process. You follow the process, you get the results. Prohad Maharaj is describing to us what is this process? Hearing, chanting, remembering. Prohad, he's our Acharya in Smaranam. He always remembers the law. If we want to remember, First we have to hear and we have to chant and then it will be natural to remember. Hare Krishna. Welcome. Hare Krishna. Nice to see you. Very kind of you to come. <laughs> so we're speaking about Prahlad Maharaj and how Prahlad is one of the great devotees. He's one of the authorities in Bhakti Yoga. He's one of the Mahajans. There are 12 Mahajans. You know? Swayambhu Narada. Shambhu. Omar Kapolo Manu, Pravado Janako, Sijmo, Balira, Vyasaki, Yamuras. So Prahlad is one of the Mahajans. And he teaches us Smaranam, remember Krishna. In Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Narada Muni is searching for the devotee who received the greatest mercy from the Lord. So at one point, Prahlad, uh, at one point, Narada Muni hears about Prahlad. The Prahlad is a great devotee. The, the Lord came to protect him from his demoniac father. And the Lord personally killed Prahlad's father so that Prahlad would be saved and Prahlad could become the king. So Narada Muni was thinking, oh, Prahlad is a great devotee. I should go. And he, he went to find Prahlad. And he went to this place in Jambudvip, Aharimamsa, where, where Prahlad was living. And he told Prahlad, you are the greatest devotee. You are the greatest devotee. And Prahlad said, me? You must be joking. No way, I'm not a great devotee. And he said, no, no, come on. He said, I'm not a good devotee. And Narada was saying, no, you're a great devotee. Lord Nishingadev came to protect you. He did so much. So he, he, he killed your father, he protected you from all the danger. And, but Prahlad said, I never did anything for the Lord. He may have done that for me, but I never did anything for him. All I do is remember him. He said, you should go and find those devotees who actually serve him. He said, they're great devotees, they're much better than me. So like this, this is Prahlad's mode. He doesn't think of himself to be a great devotee. But it's, it's very important for us to understand his example, his mood. And he does pray, although in that particular instance he was telling Narada, I don't I don't do any I don't do any, I don't do any service, but he has he does have a compassionate mood. And he cares about the people suffering in the material world. He says, he's a Prahlad said, I don't I don't like these people who go to the mountains and go to the forest away from the world 
they're only thinking of their own liberation. They go into the mountains and they go into the fire. They're thinking about their own liberation, how they can get liberated. He said, that is not very good. He said, it, 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 I want to be in the cities where all the people are. I want to give them Krishna consciousness. I don't want to go away from the people. I want to go to the people and find them and give them the message of Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada writes about that in his purports in that section of Srimad Bhagavatam. He said our devotees, they shouldn't go away to just a quiet place thinking about their own <coughs> salvation. And of course Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati also, he described like that. Dushna Mani Krishna, Tumi Kishara Vaishnava, Pratishta Nagare Nirjanera, Tava Harinam Kevala Taita. What kind of Vaishnava are you? Simply for your own liberation, simply for your own uh, adoration and distinction, you want to sit down and chant the holy name for your own personal satisfaction. You want people to honor you. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, This is not Vaishnava. And Prahlad Maharaj also said, He does not think <coughs> about going away from the world. That that is selfish to think about our own salvation. We should think about giving Krishna consciousness to others. And Lord Krishna also says in Bhagavad Gita, Nachatasman manushishu kashchitme 